God sees all the good that you have the potential to achieve and do and to accomplish. God imagines your breakthroughs long before they happen. We'll talk more about that later. Let's start right here. First of all, let me just give you this statement here. Good or bad, your imagination will get you there. Good or bad, your imagination will get you there. If you have a bad imagination, which I'll you know, kind of quantify that, if you have a destructive imagination, you have a perverse imagination, you have, I don't know, no one here does, but I just want to cover all the bases here. If you have a pessimistic imagination, if you have a defeatist imagination, you have a very depressed imagination, whatever you are imagining, let's, we'll cover the bad first, that is what you're going to have. That's going to get you to there. Whatever you're imagining is going to develop in your life. So if you are imagining that things are always going to be bad, it's always going to be broken, dysfunctional, you're never going to have enough money, uh, you're going to be sick all your, all your life, or you know, your, your, your children are always going to be troubled and, and problematic, and, and uh, you're never really going to have peace in your life, and you're really not going to be totally happy. If you're imagining all of that, if you're imagining anything that is really destructive, you're going to end up there. You will end up there. Now, not you. Somebody say, not me, because you don't imagine things like that, right? Let's look at the good side. So when we start imagining good things, why do you think, and we'll extrapolate this more fully in the weeks to come, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, it was Paul's uh, eighth closing. He was trying to close that sermon, and he just kept going. See, that's where I get that. So blame the apostle Paul. When he said, finally, but this was still not finally because he just kept going. Finally, my brethren, what things are honest, just, pure, lovely, good report, be any virtue, be any praise, what are you going to say? Think on these things. I've directed our attention to, to, to that very scripture previously. We're going to go back to it here in a few weeks because it's been a while. Because we really don't apply Philippians 4, 8 every day in our life. We don't apply it every moment of our imagination. It should be the bedrock of our imagination. So there again, good or bad, your, your imagination will get you there. So when you start imagining good things, you start seeing in your mind's eye, your spirit's eye, your heart. You start seeing it in your heart. We'll look at that more fully too. You begin to develop your future. Now I'm going to shake some of your theological chains here, but I'm going to say this. You are the master of your destiny. So I say God is. No, he's not. He's not the master of your destiny. You are. He's given you the reins because you gave him your life. He's given you the reins. Reins analogy, which falls under the biblical doctrine of free moral agency. So even when you become born again, you still have free moral agency within you. I mean, you can do what you want to do. Now, there will be consequences, good or bad. You can do what you want to do. Now, no one will ever do this, but you could stop serving God after today. You could choose to become an atheist. You could choose to do a host of deplorable things with your life even. But did God make you do that? No, you chose to do that, what? proving that you're a master of your destiny. We know that God has predestined good things for us, but it's up to us to do our part to see those materialize in our life. So we begin to understand it's our imagination that helps us even fulfill our destiny. It's our imagination that begins to give us the things that God has promised us. Look at this. Lay a little more foundation here. Genesis chapter 6. I'm going to look today from that very statement of good or bad, your imagination will get you there. Saved or not saved, your imagination will get you there. I know, I know you've read a lot of business books too, like I have, and, and not just business books, but I, I, lo- I really enjoy reading people who accomplish great things, be they, you know, be they politicians or you know, be they world leaders, I should say, be they world leaders or be they uh, business leaders, people who accomplish great things with their life. I love reading biographies from them. 
And even autobiographies, as long as they, uh, you know, don't lie too much. Because, you know, um, my uncle kind of used to put it this way in his own way. He'd say, you know, I, I never let truth get in the way of a good story. But anyway, uh, there we go. We got it. So anyway, so... But I, 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 I really enjoy reading about people who, who accomplish great things. And one of the things, if you'll notice this, in their own way, in their own way, some of them mentioned it specifically like this, or at least they mentioned it but just in a different format, is that they always envisioned greatness. They always imagined doing something. Since they were a child, they imagined doing Something great. Not for greatness sake, not for their name's sake, but they just imagined doing something great with their life. They didn't imagine, oh, I'm a victim all of my life and everything is so uh, against me and there are so many more injustices out there. And they, they, didn't, they didn't get into that kind of stuff. You know, the more you feed your mind, you're feeding your destiny. But look at this, Genesis chapter 6. That was good, wasn't it? Thank you. Genesis chapter 6, let's start in verse 8. Good or bad, saved or not saved, your imagination will get you there. Genesis 6, verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. That every imagination, just real quick, like, I wonder, okay, in the original translation, all the way back to 1611, that given translation, why did those scholars, and I talked about those scholars before, those Hebraic and Greek scholars, why did they use sometimes thought versus imagination? It was primarily the tense of the verb and also what word captured more fully that power of the gift that God has given us. And that's why many times you'll see this word imagination, which is accurate. So, and, and God saw that every imagination, somebody say every imagination. Every imagination of the thoughts. Isn't that interesting? See? Because imagination precedes thoughts. That every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only what? Evil continually. This is the crux of the, the biblical reason why God destroyed the earth in the Noahic flood. That's why God did it, is because of this. I don't know about you, but it's like, I think we're about there again today. But anyway, other than the redeemed of the Lord, other than basically, basically uh, the modern-day Noah people, I mean, the world falls in that category. I want to read that again and break it down just a little bit more like I began to a moment ago. That God saw, that God saw that every imagination of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. I said it. I want to enlarge upon just a moment. Now, there again, your imagination produces thoughts. Here's why, and I'll prove this in the weeks to come. Your imagination proceeds from your heart, which develops into thought patterns. I'm going to get a little ahead of myself, about a week ahead of myself, when Jesus said this. When Jesus said, out of, not only is out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks, he also said this, for out of the heart, out of the heart proceed thoughts and he mentioned several things, referring to sinful thoughts, adultery, fornication, murder even. Now what's interesting, Jesus said from the heart proceeds the thought to carry something out. Because it's in the seat of the heart where the imaginations occur. Now spiritually speaking, heart, which is one spirit. So it's from your spirit is where your imagination rests. Your soul is where your thought life will take over. So whatever one's spirit is, be it redeemed or not redeemed, that's where your imagination rests. So we as the redeemed of the Lord, somebody say so, so, little joke there, scripture, as you well know, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So, are you the redeemed of the Lord? There you go. So, I caught you off guard. Are you the redeemed of the Lord? There you go. So, say so, anything like that. Anyway, so, because you know what he really means. He's, he's saying, testify to it. Tell people that you are redeemed. Don't be ashamed of it. Let people know that God's been good to you, that God saved you. God's redeemed you. He's blessed you. He's prospered you. He's healed you. He's given you a great life, right? You know, if Christians are living a mundane life, it's their own fault. 
I can see why people of the world live a mundane life. I can see why they have a miserable existence. I can see that because they ain't got Christ. If Christians are living a miserable life, it is their own stinking fault. Ain't nothing miserable about Jesus. Ain't nothing boring about God. Oh, I need some help. I need a witness here today. So anyway, so there again, Jesus made it. Did you catch all that? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop there because we're going to develop that more next week. So from the Spirit, your imaginations begin to rise that take place to the point that develop your thought life. Your thought pattern was first preceded by one's imagination. And that's why it's imperative to tap into your God-given imagination. It's in your spirit. This is why you're going through hell or high water. You're going through the most difficult time in your life, and it would be easy for you to quit. It would at least be easy for you to break down and cry. At least be easy for you to go and get drunk. Now, you got to stay. I didn't say you should go get drunk. Hear me out on this. It would be easier, bottom line, it would be easier to just step off into the flesh. That's my point there, right? It'd be easier to flake out, wig out, drunk out. You know, it, it would be easier to do that. It'd be easier to check out. It would be easier to say, I'm done. I am going away, wherever. Like Marshall Tucker said, going to take a freight train all the way to Georgia, ain't never coming back. But anyway, don't know where that one came from. So anyway, uh, you, you feel like doing it. I never felt like that. I got five honest people. Beside myself here. We've all felt that way at one time or another, right? You know, kind of choose, choose your form there, but we've all felt it one way or another. Now, did you notice what happened, though? You didn't do that. And if you did, you know, you asked for forgiveness. The Lord forgave you, restored you, and it's under the blood, and it's forgotten, right? But you didn't do that, right? So why was it in the midst of that dark time in your life when it would have been easier to just quit that something on the inside of you begin to show you that this thing could be turned around. That things are going to get better. Where in the world did it come from? Not from this world. It came from heaven, the throne room of God that he put in your spirit to imagine that things are going to turn around for you. Things are going to turn around in your marriage, going to turn around in your finances. Your health is going to turn around. Your kids are going to turn around. Things are going. You started imagining that. Where'd that come from? The depth of your spirit, man. Then you begin to think it. Then you begin, and because then after the thought comes the belief. Let's get back to this. So that, 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 that's what this scripture is referring to. That's why that word imagination is so important. Is that, is that the thought, that, that every imagination of their thoughts, so their spirit, of course, that unredeemed, unregenerate spirit that these individuals had during the days of Noah, that their spirit was not just churning up these continual thoughts of evil. We know the rest of that story, right? And we just continue to read. You know, it, it, it hurt. It hurt the Lord. It bothered his heart. That's where the word repented the Lord. That's what that actually means. There was contrition in the heart of God. What had happened to his creation. That's what that means, okay? It doesn't mean that, oh, God made a mistake, Okay? So re repentance primarily means contrition. God was contrite when he saw the destructive nature that had developed in his creation. And don't you know he, he does that today? Don't you know he does that today? And the Lord said, I will destroy men whom I have created from the face of the earth. And he, he, we see that. Look at verse 8. But Noah found grace in the sight of the Lord. You know one of the reasons why? Noah saw all that mess going on. But Noah kept imagining. I don't know how. Don't know when. But I know one way or another, God's going to preserve us from this mess. See, this is what's beautiful about your imagination, your God-given, spirit-inspired imagination. You don't have to know the whens, the hows, and the whys. All you have to do is formulate it. Whew, I just felt God on that one. All you have to do is just formulate it. And that begins, you know, when the word of God says, deep cries unto deep at the noise of thy water spouts. That's one of the things it's talking about. Your spirit, the depth of your spirit 
is crying up to the depth of the Spirit of God. And from that, at the noise of thy waters, meaning at the place of life, of the flow of life. So there is a place within your spirit that if you could tap into it, you bypass the mess of the world and the noise and the pollution that just tries to always invade your faith and your peace. And deep down in your spirit, you can actually be, you can really, you can actually be insulated from it. You can be inoculized from it. You can be at a place in the midst of perverseness and a mess of the world that there is a place that your spirit can go to and you start imagining, one thing I do know, it's going to get better for me. The world may be and is going to hell in a handbasket, but as for me and my house and CIC and people in my life, I'm imagining a better day. I'm imagining better things. I'm imagining some breakthroughs. I'm imagining, tell somebody, I'm imagining some good things right about now. I'm imagining some good things. For more information about our teaching resources, visit our website at CICLive.com.